What is the life of faith all about? How do we experience it? Is it church services, fill in the blank Bible studies, modest clothing, sanitized music? Is it observing the passing waters and enjoying the scenery? Is it Christianity? No, it's about Jesus, and therefore it's risky business. Sometimes the difference between existing and living is only three seconds. For so many of us, we think of Jesus and picture a respectable, safe white man holding a lamb. But he was neither respectable, nor safe, nor white, and whilst he might have carried a lamb on occasion and been referred to as Lamb of God, he was also the Lion of Judah. And for those of us who follow the Lion, it means embracing the call to being divinely dangerous. Following Christ, living the life of faith is systematically unsafe. It's risky business. See, Jesus wasn't a pious resident of the Ivory Towers. No, he lived on the ground with the people, fully engaged in his messy, complicated and judgmental world. And we don't admire Jesus for what he didn't do. No, we stand in awe of what he did do, what he did say, who he touched and how he prayed. Jesus spoke clearly and aggressively against the system. He denounced hypocrisy, healed the sick, cast out demons from the unclean, raised people from the dead. He empowered the marginalized. He was a transformer in a none too gentle way. I mean, look at the story of the man born blind in John's Gospel. Jesus takes this guy's eyes in mud and heals him. Unconventional, to say the least. But you see, there's more to it than that. It was the Jewish Sabbath, the day of rest, and work was not permitted. And as Jesus reached down and took that mud, it constituted work. Now, he could have just used a breath or reached out and touched the guy. But no, his approach was absolutely intentional, calculated, and defiant. And his actions throughout the Gospels are successive markers of the bold statements he made, the risks he took, his sacrificial empathy and vulnerability. And this is to be our lives. It's a slow uphill journey made up of many small decisions to say yes and go. Dangerous. Ninety percent of the time it's just showing up. Not too many of us are going to get the bright lights in the sky, the writing on the wall, the talking shrubbery kind of experience. If we're honest with each other, we're not even sure what we're doing is the right thing. We're not sure it's what God would want. But maybe that's the point. Three seconds. Walk out the front door. Pick up the phone. Stretch out your hand. Sign up. Try out. Take the path less traveled. Decide to stay, open your mouth, say no, say yes. Those three seconds in the dark spaces of your mind when synapses fire from decision to action. You close your eyes, take a deep breath and go. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Even if you go frontwards, backwards, Head first, feet first, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. He won't leave you out to dry or cast you out for making the wrong move. It's not what lies on the other side, it's that you step through the door. See, he happily takes us as we are. He'll hold on to us no matter how much we scream or squirm. But the posture we take on the ride defines how we will experience it. Being half-hearted, hesitating, holding back means they'll there'll be a big snap at the bottom. When we're only halfway obedient to God, we can expect jolts further down the line. But when you open your arms wide and jump as far as you can,
It's like flying. I've bungee jumped nine times now, and yet every time I step towards the edge, I have to talk myself down. I know full well there's a cord attached to my ankles that's been tested hundreds of times, and it's not gonna snap. I know that I'm not gonna go plummeting to my death in the Nile below. And similarly, I know that God loves me, that he's got his hands upon me, that he's watching over me, and yet when it comes time to actually jumping, theory and practice seem miles apart. And yet, to step back and embrace the status quo is surely unthinkable. Life drones on, sin pervades, systems of oppression flourish. Three seconds to cross the threshold. And we're not idiots. Faith and reason aren't opposites. We don't jump without a cord. No, we make bold attempts to follow God's promptings, precisely because we know that God's a God of love that he's got plans to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. He's come that we have life and life to the full. He'll never leave us or forsake us, no. Following Christ, living the life of faith, is a calculated risk. Dangerous and yet completely safe. Because safety isn't the absence of danger, it's the presence of God. And we're immortal until God calls us home. That realization, if you choose to embrace it, will help you become dangerously alive.